Welcome back to another video on ANO 1800. Today we're going to be having a look at a bunch of tips and tricks. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner, intermediate or advanced player, there may be some tips that you'd like to learn in this. So we'll go ahead straight away and I'll show you a quick little, a few little ones in the early game. Remember your starting harbour, your starting trading post is also a warehouse. So if you don't want to spend much money early on, you can go ahead and build some lumber yards right close to your starting harbour. If you don't want to spend much money, and just go something like this, something nice and easy. And you go that, connect it, connect it to our harbour area. And there we go. It's that simple. So all of these will operate straight to the harbour. So rather than having to be a warehouse and bear that extra maintenance cost. So that's just a simple little trick early on. Now I prefer to do a um, build like this. So what I do is I build two warehouses, four sawmills, four lumber yards. And the way I'll start it off is like this. I'll connect that down to my city. Well, I don't have a city yet, but we'll connect it down to this area. And what I'll do is I'll just delete these now. We don't need that. Okay, so I've got our starting lumber yard. And what I'll do is I'll just put my city in. This is a stamp and I'll talk about that in a minute. And I'll just put this down there. I think that looks pretty good. We'll just do that for now. Okay, so now we've got our wood production, we've got some housing layout, we've built our marketplace there, and we'll have enough lumber to build a few houses. And that's used up all of our lumber. So now we just have to let our population grow, and I'll show you how this works. So we'll put that on fast. So the reason why this is efficient is because as your workers grow and they're working these jobs, this warehouse becomes a bit ramped over time. So you need a second warehouse to make this as efficient as possible because lumber is the key resource early, which you just can't do anything. We're sitting here waiting even on time three, waiting for the lumber to come in as our population grows. So you can see our workers now are busy going about it. We've got people growing in our city here. So we're getting there. We've nearly got a, a, our industry working full. First lumber is starting to come in now. So we want to get to 10 and I want to build this warehouse because you start seeing this starts getting ramped. And it starts it. Got two ramps there already, so that means people are sitting around waiting. And this early in the game, it's going to over a whole game. There's going to be a lot of wasted time. So now we've got two. And now we won't have any ramping going on whatsoever. So it's a little bit more maintenance, but it means our lumber is as efficient as possible. You can see we're getting ten lumber already. So let's go ahead. We can build some more. And you can just see how quick the lumber starts coming in. It just gives you a really fast start. So you can see how you can see how quickly I can I'm able to build up already. And what you can do as you get enough workers, you can do copy, just copy that, and you could replicate that, and uh, just say right there, or maybe a little bit further over, maybe there if you want to, hook that up, and you could have massive amounts of lumber coming. This would be overkill for the early game, but once you start building ships, you probably want some more lumber, and you're getting more industry doesn't hurt to have extra lumber because it helps you to be able to go to other islands and that as well and get more lumber there. Now with this early uh, city layout, I quite like this design because it makes efficient use of your marketplace. You can see here the range in green, the, the lighter the green, the less coverage there is for these houses. Now there is a little bit on the corners which is probably not getting the full use. And that's because I put a four lane gap here, two roads, because eventually I'm going to have railroads down there. So what I like to do is I always like to leave enough space for railroads and main roads through my cities. And normally I'd do along the harbour area as well. I'd probably have uh, a main road going along like this, like this, leave a gap. So I'd normally this city would be a little bit further up so that I have a main road along here linking here. So I can have railroads coming along here. And what I'm looking for is wherever my oil is, on the island, so it's up there. So I'd probably have railroad going up here and I'll have a another connection 
probably up this way or maybe up even up through here and you'd have a look where you're going to plan your industry so eventually you can keep some main roads and having some crossroads so that you can uh, it, it looks good as well when you, when you fill it in I wouldn't do that in the beginning because it costs too much money but later on you can so that makes efficient use of um, your space you don't have to do a lot of redesign later and get railroads. So in this area, you put a lot of service buildings in what you need, schools and universities and things like that. Uh, in these areas, I put um, fire stations. You can, uh, you know, you plonk a fire station down like here, and you might have another one up in this area, so on opposite sides. Okay, so next tip is about stamps. That's a new addition to the game and one of the recent updates. You can look at stamps here with this button here and you can also create stamps with this button here so if you come up with a good design or you see a good layout you want to use say you want to copy this and you lay it out then you just go to stamp just go to a corner of the area you wanted it click the left button hold it down drag cover the whole area now you've made a stamp okay and you can see it's coming up here that's what it started off with because I clicked on the lumberjack to start with and if you don't want it if you don't like it just go delete but now I've got that layout there already and I already had it there as well so but I'll go ahead and delete that one and that's how easy it is to make stamps now and that will that is, will save across all your games so you'll be able to use it in all your new games that you have and same with nice city layouts that you come up with because I've got um, some various layouts here uh, let me have a look now one of the things which is very important is happiness and needs now if you click on a house you see you've got two tabs needs and happiness in the needs area you'll see the various areas that they need to fulfill in this case it's fish and work clothes and a marketplace and this leads to increased population you can see there we've got farmers and a certain amount of coin but it's mostly population growth in this area in this area the happiness these various areas will lead to increased coins if you provide these items so you can see there you get two plus three coins because I've got a bit of uh, lower snaps in that area and we've got a pub which provides one coin when you get up to let's say engineers you can see that you get extra plus nine coins for a theater for rum it's up to plus 46 coins and you can see they're a bit low in rum and then you've got penny farthings and so on so you can see as you provide each good it leads to increased uh, income and you can see here also that you also get increased population and income from the needs area so that's an important area that you need to um, understand in anno 1800 so if you want to make a uh, lots of money in anno 1800 what you need to do is there's two main ways which is either build more population build more housing and increase your population that way or fulfill their luxury needs which is these goods for workers you want these goods churches beer pub for artisans church theater beer rum so those are the two main ways which you can boost your population. At the moment, my income's going down, probably because I've got a lack of rum at the moment and also a lack of snaps. And if I had a look at my production, which you can do uh, control R and have a look at your production screen and we can bring that up and get production. And there you go, it brings up all the different areas of production. And what we can have a look at here, you can go sort by consumption, production, so you bring up the areas of the biggest shortages. Now, some of these things I'm importing from overseas of the other islands. So, but rum is an area which is of concern, which I know last session I recently uh, upped that increase and you got bread. So you can see here, the blue item is the need. This is the demand for bread. And this is your local uh, production on that island. Now, anything I'm producing here locally, you'll see in uh, green. So you can see here, the demand is the uh, 62 62 oh, it keeps moving at the moment uh, 62 lumber it's because the game's ramping up at the moment that's why so I must have it must have moved so <laughs> I've lost it there it is okay let's uh, stop doing that for the moment 
now so it won't move so it's 62 and this is my production so i've got 31 with the light green and the dark green is potentially 35 if i met all the criteria such as workforce and resources for that job sort by productivity you can sort by how productive your industries are you can see that and sort by profit how much profit each product makes as well and in this area you can also see different items that you have in storage the how much it's going down by or increasing by you can see finance you can see here where your money is being spent now royal taxes People often ask, what are royal taxes? So royal taxes are what you pay to the crown, to the queen, because you are a chartered company which is being tasked with building colonies and setting up trade routes. So, and this is the tax you have to pay. Now you can pay up to 40% tax. That's what it's capped at. It starts when you hit 998 pops. And from there, it goes, starts at 9% and then it will increase by 1% per 125 pops per strata so per farmers every 120 farmers up to 998 every uh, worker every artisan and that's so on it goes up one percent so over time as your population grows in each area your taxes will increase and there's there's no way really to easily decrease that it, you can manage it by keeping smaller populations on lots of different islands but that becomes really tedious and that it's better just to keep growing your income and your your, your economy so that i wouldn't worry too much about royal taxes it's just part of the game and you have to pay it. There's no way really to get around it. So I've told you about Control R. Uh, you can do Control E, and you can bring up um, your finance easily. Also items. Items are very powerful. You can look at uh, the various items you've got in your uh, storage that you currently own. So you can see the different bonuses that they provide. You can have a look through here ship items that I might have, trade union items, harbour master items, town hall items, cultural items. Now you can do uh, unknown so that you can look at all the different items in the whole game and you can go through there and try and find uh, items that you'd like. You can see, look how many there are, there's just crazy numbers. Look at that. So yeah, good luck trying to work out uh, which ones uh, are best for you but the the ones are probably the most use uh, ship items so you can get extra defenses um, damage output to your ships uh, mortars they're good and uh, town hall items they're very powerful as well and you'd be looking for a a few certain ones and uh, okay another good feature is upgrade button these guys keep chibber jabbing. So another good item is the upgrade button. Like if you want to upgrade your roads to uh, stone roads, instead of doing like each individual one, what you can do is you can just click on a dirt road somewhere, and go like that and highlight a whole area. As long as you've got enough bricks, it'll do that whole area. Bang like that. There you go. It's all done, which is another recent feature of Anno 1800, which is really good. You can do a similar thing to group buildings. Let's say... Um, I want to upgrade all these farmers here. Let's just get on the first building, hold across there, bang, done, upgrade. Upgrade that whole area. Provided you've got enough resources, you can do that. And it makes it really easy to upgrade. Just make sure you've got enough farmers. I've built up too many, I've just upgraded too many farmers, so now I haven't got enough to work my farms. Now you can also do that when you want to delete things. If you want to say, delete, um, you only want to delete uh, this lot of farmers and leave the road. You just hover over the building you want to delete, go like that, and it will only delete those farmers. Same as if I'm deleting a big area. If I wanted to um, delete these farmers, if I wanted to delete, oh, let's say I wanted to delete these workers, but leave the artisans in this area, I could just go like that. See so how that just deletes all the workers. Because it starts from whatever building type you hover on. So you don't have to worry about deleting unnecessary things you didn't want to delete if you get the right building to start off with. Now you can also use the copy paste function. You can use the copy paste function from there. Or you can press C. You can just go copy, paste, and copy whatever you need. It's good with industries. Let's look at one of my other islands. 
um, let's say you wanted to you know copy a whole bunch of wheat fields onto a new island you could just go like this drag to there copy all of that let's go down to this island here and I could find some room somewhere and go bang and build them all there that's an easy way to do it or you can create a stamp like that as well if you want to or you can just start by building a uh, a couple you can go like this you just go like that you can just highlight that and actually highlights the whole lot just have to highlight a little area of both the farm farm area and the building and you just got that and then I can go and just cop to so got that see and it'll highlight the whole lot and just go like that then I can press C again highlight and do it again with that and you can do it again bang okay multiplying it across easy easy as that so good little feature as well and the other good thing you can use too is if you haven't seen already is the blueprint mode button down here so that if you're not sure on your design you can go copy and you can build some of that and go that and go oh you go oh i didn't really want to do it like that i didn't want that building there you rearrange it only thing that does get built is the roads but not the buildings so you can um Play around it that way so particularly when you're building industries and farms you can play around the blueprint mode and lay it all out and set it out and move it around now with some buildings particularly the bigger buildings if you're looking to build um you know something which is larger like a hospital and you're not sure which way it's going to line press your, your middle mouse button and you can spin it around and one of the good features in the game is very early on when you want to have your lumber production you're trying to increase your lumber production make sure that you increase your production you can boost it up to 50 percent early and also the lumber so you want your timber and lumber production to boost to 50 percent because until you get the option to build a police station which is when you upgrade to workers you can't don't have a chance of a riot so there's no right chance until you can build a police station so that's something to keep an eye on early because you can get that little bonus once you get right chance, if you are boosting production in various areas, make sure you have a police station within the nearby because you will get riots, particularly if you're playing on harder areas. You've got a couple of police stations here, and riots can be quite large and troublesome once you get into higher difficulty levels. And when you do have a riot, it's good to reduce the production so the workers aren't so unhappy, and it will help reduce the riot. Um, uh, from getting out of control and if it is out of control it will help them uh, get it under control because if you just leave the production higher it keeps the workers unhappy and it's much harder to control the riot now, if you're looking to quickly unload goods from a ship what you can do is instead of clicking on the trade and transfer button which is here you can just go hold that long as we enraged drag and drop it and it will come out that did go down a bit but i'm pretty sure i'm capped here on sand now I'm at 690. You can see there my storage is 690 of 690, so I can't transfer any more of that item. But you can transfer items. You can just go directly and drag it into the warehouse. You can also do it if you're going to sell something. If your ship's here, you don't actually have to click on it and click transfer. You can just click on the ship and drag the items out and sell it straight to there. So that's a quicker way of buying and selling items. Trade routes. Trade routes is down here in the bottom right. You can click on it from getting into there, or you can click on a ship, open trade route menu, which is that one there, and it brings you to this area here. Now to set up a trade route, let's just click on a, we'll click on this button here. We'll go create a trade route, create a trade route there, and you can just set an island, whichever one you're exporting from, say this island to this island. You're gonna load the items at wherever you want to load it from say this island make sure you're loading at the correct island and you pick the, the item you want to load loading groups of hundreds on this ship well it, it says hundreds on here but depending on the ship like a schooner can hold uh, 50 a royal warship will hold 100 and a, um, a normal trade ship will hold 75 now you got to make sure you click unload as well so that it knows where to unload it and you click accept so you got to load unload and you can click multiple items you can right click on there and it'll clear it you can click oh, i want some lumber from there as well and just make sure unload and you can click 
different items. So you can have four different products if you want to, loading and then unloading at this destination. And you can even set a third spot if you want to on the way back, it stops here and unloads more or, or picks up goods from here and then loads and unloads them there. So we could go, go to there and say, all right, at, uh, well, we know we want to unload it there, but at Rome, I also want to load, um, I want some shirts and then I want to drop them off here. All right, so you can do like a three way triangle trade. And you can do more, you want to add four. And you hit accept. You can also assign groups. You can create a new group. So I've got my groups um, captured to Rome, which is this island to there, just to make it easier to see where my trades are. And I'll just show you that. So you can see here, I've got captured to Rome grouped up so I can see that all my trades from this island to there are under here. And then I've got Carthage to Rome, which is this island to there. Manola to Rome, which is from the New World. So you can see those trade routes are coming through there. Now, when you click on these trade routes as well, you can also control the waypoints where they enter and exit the new world or to the old world. Because let's say you've got pirates hanging around here because this is the pirate ship coming up here. You can say, okay, I want to make my uh, trade routes come out this way and they'll go around this way instead. So and you can do that for trade routes and, and different parts of the map as well. So you can try and avoid certain areas if you happen to be at war with different factions, which is good to know. That's now you can also use chartered routes, a charter route, which is create route. Okay, so you can use a charter route. If, if you're only in the game, you don't have any ships available. You can go charter a route and just say, oh, I'm in desperate need of, um, getting some uh, lumber from this island to that island. So you can go from there to there, set the amount, and then charter. And what will happen is it'll create a uh, off-route ship, will come, a neutral ship, will come and collect it up from here and go to there, and it costs a certain amount of uh, gold to do that transfer. Okay, so that's 125. Uh, timber and it looks like it costs about uh, 50 gold so set the amount of goods to be transported so that's if you haven't got any ships available so that's a handy feature to use now if you're trying to set up trade between regions you can click on a I'll show you from the here first to say we want to set up a new trade route from Rome to the new world so we go create route trade route you go from uh, let's say from Rome, you want to go to the new world. You click up here to get to your different regions and they'll, you'll be able to uh, select different regions in this area here. So we'll click the new world and then you just click on the island you want to go to and then that creates a trade route. And once again, you can control the waypoints where it comes in so that you uh, can avoid any unnecessary problems with pirates. You can see I'm at war with the pirates and Miss Hunt. So I don't want to be traveling around that area there. You can do this similar thing if I want to send, say, a warship to another region, say this uh, ship at a line here. I would pick this button here, so you order your ship to move to another region, and then click the region I want to go to, the new world, and then I can send it to a specific island, I'll say Manola. And then off it goes, it'll start making its way to Manola. So that's how you can send warships to different regions. Now there is a... Um, a production wheel on your screen which you can use so if you right click you can bring up this wheel and you can do like I need a warehouse over here or I need to uh, build a road here and so it's just a, a, a right click to get out of whatever you're building relocate copy demolish so there is a quick action wheel if you want to use it farmer residence because that's something you're building so you can just go build 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 and go oh, I need a I need to get a warehouse let's go there Oh, I need um, a marketplace and go there. Uh, um, oh, no, I don't want that one. Let's delete that. So it just saves you having to go from here all the way down here and try and find uh, the right button. So you can just go right click on your mouse wheel, click whatever you want, to get rid of it, press the uh, left button. Now, a good thing to use is all your space on an island. And a good thing to fill in like uh, areas areas like say the edge of the map here right um, I haven't got much uh, use for this space so let's go um, I need a bit more grain so let's let's build some grain farms and let's go 
let's just go here like that and I can build a couple of grain farms there and then I can go all right I need to fill in this space here let's just go like that fill in I oh, got to start adjacent area hang on I thought I did start like that there we go and I've got 90 of 144, so I might want to fill in this space here. And I might want to go up here. And you're just filling it in. Filling in all that space you're not going to use. And I could use the second one and do the same thing. And we could fill this area in. It's 122. So 144. And I've still got a little bit of space here I could have used. So you can see how you can use a lot of the area which may not be very productive for other items for your city building or big industries. You can use it for various farms and stuff to, to use up that space that you probably won't use for anything else. One of the early killers to the game is to your economy is maintenance costs. And one of the biggest hurdles to overcome is once you get to workers is your steel production. And you need steel early in the game because you need eight steel to build on new islands. You need steel and timber and two and a half thousand dollars to make a, a harbour on another island and you also need steel to start making your uh, um, pig production your soap production your what do you call it your tallow your tallow that's what you need so if you want to start making your soap production you can see here the pig farm is easy to build but then to make the rendering rendering works that's what i was looking for you need four steel and five bricks and steel early on is very expensive and to build the soap factory you need steel as well so you need eight steel just to get one production line going and then you need also need eight steel to build it on the other islands so to expand early and to make money early you need steel but steel production you can see here you need a hundred workers <laughs> my workers are not very happy so you need a hundred steel I need 100 workers and 100 maintenance cost per furnace. Then to build the actual steel works, you need 200 workers and 200 maintenance. So just to get one steel producing per minute, you need 300 workers and 300 maintenance to get one steel per minute. And early in the game, that's a lot of money when you're talking 300 maintenance. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to do your early steel production. I still try and do it early before I get to artisans, but I tend to build more population to compensate for it. So I've got the income to sustain it so that I can get my pig farms going and my soap factory going and rendering works. Because your soap, you produce it. You can then go over to Eli, who is your the prison the prison island and you can sell the soap for 384 each which is a nice early profit which you can um, make quite handily and you can also if you want to you can set up a trade route you can go to trade routes create new create a trade route and I could go let's uh, from Rome to Eli and load uh, soap at Rome so you've got heaps of soap there and unload it there and that ship will go back and forth trading and making a nice profit however i've got miss hunt right here and she sends warships in this area so that makes that somewhat problematic for me at the moment you've got to keep an eye on that so you might need to escort it or uh take a different route and manually do it early on, i manually do it because i can't afford to lose the uh the ships one of the things you can also do early on is because you're producing quite a bit of lumber early, and but you're short of money. So what you can do is build some sail cloths, which you only need a bit of wool and some sail makers, and it's one for one, it's 30 second production and 30 second for sails. So I've got some wool production here, and then I've got a couple of sail production there. So and all you need to build your early ships, you need, uh, workers you need a small harbor which does cost ten thousand dollars so it does cost a lot of money see there you need 25 bricks and you need 100 workers and it's 100 maintenance costs but once you've built that you can see here i've got three once you've built that you can start building schooners so schooners 
uh, cheap to build. They only cost 10 sails and 20 timber. Now, yeah, I just keep building them. I just queue them up like that and keep, keep them building. And what I do is I sail them over to uh, Mr. Archibald, Archibald Blake. That's pretty much the Queen's representative here. I'll click them on here and I'll go sell. Because once they get into the harbour, you can click on this area and sell it. Each schooner sells for two and a half thousand, which is pretty good money early on. And you can make a good profit just keeping the ships going to that area and selling. Now, before you colonize another island, make sure it has the right fertility that you need for what you want to build. Sometimes I've colonized islands and go, oh, I want to build uh, uh, beer and stuff on here or grow bread. And I go, oh, there's no wheat fertility. I go, oh, and there's not much you can do about it very early on. So just make sure you double check that before you um, colonize islands and secure what you need. Now, one of the good items in the game, uh, once you get to engineers and investor level, is to get the bank. I haven't quite got it unlocked here, but the bank does increase your profits greatly for engineers and investors. So if you're gonna have a bank, you'd wanna be building it in a central area. You'd, you'd be probably building it around here, or maybe I can move that school, put it in here. So just make sure you build your banks. The banks provide a great deal of income. Now, influence. Influence is a big part of the game. For influence, you need to uh, pretty much colonize islands. You need it to build ships. You can see here that each time you build a ship, there is a influence investment. It says 10 there for a royal warship. For a schooner, it's only one. For a frigate, it's four. Even to build your defenses costs money or costs influence. Uh, to build that, you can see it can cost, you can see these ones, cannon tower costs seven influence. The mounted gun, only three. The flamethrower is eight influence. 14 influence, the big the big battery. And then you've also got the anti-armor gun, nine influence. So that's why you need influence. Now influence, you gain by uh, going up in levels from farmers, to workers, to artisans, engineers, and so on. As you go up in levels and you're building up your population and city size, you gain different influence. You click on here, you can see what you're spending your influence on. You can see here, okay, I'm spending 321 on my military, 45 on trade, 85 on propaganda, which is on the newspapers which pop up, 107 on expansion. If you wanna see how you gain influence, and you click here, and you can see here the various islands or uh, benefits you're getting influence from. So island workforce, if I get up to there, I get plus 100. If I get up to these levels for um, expansion. See, this expansion is building islands. So you can see here, island workforce, global effects, investment needed, 107 of 150. And these would unlock as I go up. You see the military, I've unlocked it. I've got the different attack speed because I've built enough ships um, in various uh, military buildings to achieve that. Propaganda, I haven't done much. Trade, I haven't unlocked as much yet. You can see here that these are the total bonuses as well. And this is the influence here, my base influence. Global population because of uh, plus 675, the influence. So I'm getting 775 at the moment. So I've got 217 left of 775. So as my global population and the different types of pops get, my influence will increase. And this is where I'm at in the various levels to unlock new bonuses. And that's where I'm spending my influence. So you can click on here. You can see as well, different breakdowns. Influence costs per 1000 island tiles. Commuter peers, free influence. Now pirates. Pirates, uh, particularly in, in my game, are real pain because I'm using the combat, the combat overhaul mod. Now, where were my pirates? My pirates were, I think the pirates were down, down here somewhere. I haven't actually met them yet. But the pirates, uh, where's Sean? I'll go to the new world. Yeah, so he's here. Now you can trade with the pirates. I don't have any trading rights with him at the moment. But if I had trade rights with the pirates or with Anne in the old world, 
you can get really nice items and ships through here and you can also buy and sell nice items to them and make quite a nice profit so under diplomacy see Sean's at 22 and at 10 and you increase this by getting um, ceasefires with them you can try and flatter it says medium high chance let's give it a go nah so it didn't work let's try Anne medium high nah failed again so it's just random so I, I, I influence of them has gone down now so that's not good but if I wanted to try and pick that up again I would uh, I can't request a peace tree but I've got a ceasefire I could request a peace tree or request a ceasefire but if I request it it's gonna cost a lot of money see three hundred thousand dollars for 50 minutes I'm not gonna pay that not at the moment and then my relations go down again so you gotta be very careful what you offer and do what will happen is the pirates the pirates will offer a uh, ceasefire if your military strength is bigger than theirs which uh, mine is at the moment and you might kill a few of their ships and they might offer you a ceasefire for you know, fifty thousand dollars or seventy five thousand dollars i suggest you take it whenever you can and for some reason her military is not very big in this game at the moment either and she's caught the walloping somehow she must be struggling so probably the only other thing left to explain just to make sure everyone understands it is your uh, production times for items let's have a look at uh, something like beer so you can see there it says grain production one minute that means it if your grain farm will produce one grain every one minute as long as it's got the whole workforce it needs and it's connected to a road your malt house you need 30 seconds to produce one malt so that means you could produce two malt for every one grain so you've got to keep this in mind when you're doing your production and then you've got hot farms which is one minute 30 for production so they take longer so we need all these items to make beer so Grain turns into malt, so you only need two grain farms per one malt house. And that means that'll have enough for the next minute for this malt house. So two farms to one malt house is enough to make one beer. But then you need a hot farm. The way I've set it up is I've got my wheat being uh, floured here. That's for bread production. But for my beer production, I've got my malt houses up here so that I can use a trade hall and boost them so I've got uh, five malt houses which is basically enough to produce I think 10 10 beer and I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I think we've got eleven actually so I probably need I probably need another malt house unless I've got another one around here somewhere so if you had a look at my malt my malt's probably a little bit down, it is too, and that's probably because my malt is not keeping pace with my beer production. And the wheat is a bit down as well. So you can see I probably need to increase my wheat production, so I can increase my malt production, and I probably also need to increase my uh, flour and bread production as well. So this is where you've got to keep an eye on your production chains. And so you can see how the different timings can be a little bit uh, harder. Yeah, you can see I've got quite a lot of hops production here because hops you need more of so it's probably uh, good to have six hops six to eight hops four malts eight wheat farms for four beer if you're looking to look at production tables you can go to the wiki and get uh, uh, the Anna 1800 wiki and that's got the production tables there exactly what you need to try and work out your production so I often use it too because it's hard to remember on the, on the fly all right, I think that's about 30, 30 odd tips I've given. So hopefully that's enough to get everyone um, up and running. And if you like this video, hit that like button for me. Subscribe to my channel because we'll be doing um, uh, a lot of Anna 1800. Do love this game. I think it's great. There is, I do have an Anna 1800 play series going at present as well. So you can um, have a look at that and uh, tell me what you think. All right, thanks for watching. Bye for now.